It is impossible to talk about One Piece live action without first going over Netflix's track record of adapting anime to live action, which is abysmal. When Netflix announced a live action One Piece, the collective weight of the world instantly fell due to everyone throwing up. Oh sh! here we go again. <laughs> Up until this moment, Netflix has had a 100% success rate and failure when attempting anime adaptations, starting with Death Note, an anime that should have been one of the easiest things to convert to live action. Instead, they condensed 37 episodes down to a 100 minute movie. They didn't stop there though. They also stripped the main character Light's dynamic struggle with morality, removed his cat and mouse game with the main antagonist L, which made the anime out of its mind in terms of suspense. And for reasons beyond anyone's understanding, they forced a romantic subplot that was never there in the first place. Gross. <laughs> So now that Netflix has completely ruined Death Note, it sets its sights on the big dog, the cream of the crop, the head honcho, the creme de la creme, the thing that's on the top, the anime that made all anime digestible for a mainstream Western audience. Yeah, I'm talking about that one, Cowboy Bebop. This is an anime that dominated any genre it dipped into, had compelling characters who couldn't escape their past, and dialogue that landed somewhere between a film noir and a grindhouse picture. The live action adaptation on the other hand were uh, none of those things. That's not Radical Ed, that's Special Ed. Instead, the live action adaptation of Cowboy Bebop was a bastardization on all fronts. It was a cheap cash grab that, in the end, was Cowboy Bebop in name only. The dialogue was anything but natural, and it came off more like a 14-year-old tryhard attempting meta humor for the first time because he watched all the Marvel movies more than once. Oh, good for you. You know how to write. Now go back to writing Captain Marvel fan fiction, fuckface. That was pathetic with the new song. I didn't like that. Don't try that again right after this. The main antagonist, Vicious, was reduced to a bitch who had about as much mystery to him as unsalted rice cakes. The central themes of loneliness and never being able to escape one's past were thrown into a black hole never to be seen from again. It was like watching someone eat at Olive Garden and say it was the best Italian food they ever had. It's fucking disgusting. <laughs> Live action Bebop demonstrated no fundamental understanding of the source material and no respect for the already built-in audience. No one showcased this more than Daniela Pineda, the principal actress for Faye Valentine. This broad thought the best way to promote her show was to attack the fans before the show even aired. Hey guys, so as you know, our Cowboy Bebop first look dropped today, which was so exciting. And I just wanted to address a couple of things that sort of keep coming up in the comments amongst fans. First, I wanted to apologize to the fans that I did not anatomically match the Faye Valentine character. Um, six foot, double D size breast, two inch waist. You know, they looked everywhere for that woman and they couldn't find her. It proved to be too complicated. And the other thing I wanted to bring up was I want to apologize that the outfit I'm wearing is not exactly what she wears in the anime. You know, we tried, um, but doing stunts in tissue paper, things disappear, they rip. Sometimes it just got lost. Anyway, like I was saying, that original costume, uh, they made a couple of them, but like I said, they got sort of slurped up in my various crevices. She's the exact reason why you do not let actors and actresses have a social media account. So from here on out, I'm just going to show you a bunch of women cosplaying as Faye in order to, one, point out just how bullshit of a statement this is, and two, give some fan service back to the fans. So to reiterate here, the live action One Piece was announced. Everyone threw up, but then the then the promos, the the pro. All right, we gotta pause the fake cosplay. I can't do this and and look at that. She makes me feel kind of funny. 
Like when we used to climb the rope in gym class. Everything about Netflix's live action adaptation of One Piece said it was destined to fail. One Piece the anime has gotten ass so thick. A dumper so juicy it's 1,075 episodes large. So much junk in the trunk it contains more than 437.26 hours or 18.21 days worth of entertainment. Even if this cake had the filler removed and tightened things up a bit by doing a little bit of squats, it's still 980 episodes pressing them to them jeans, baby. Basically, this show has ass for days and that ass keeps growing. Throughout the years, I've been suggested the anime, but I look at those daunting numbers and without any sort of digestible abridged version, I reserved myself to the fact that I missed the boat. Look, with that many episodes, it's going to be like a whole thing of sitting down and watching it. And it's also a matter of cleaning out all three freezers to make room for the hot pockets because you need something fast and speedy to eat. It's also a thing about getting out the bedpan so I don't have to get up to take a shit. And on top of all that, I gotta do a little bit of doctor shopping who will preemptively prescribe me insulin for my inevitable type 2 diabetes. What I'm trying to say is I don't have the time. I enjoy not having gangrene. Therefore, in pure volume of story they needed to cover, Netflix picks one of the hardest animes to adapt into live action. With the announcement alone, Netflix had to either cut a ton from the storyline or cancel all future TV and movie projects in order to cover the budget. Netflix chose to be greedy and have their fat ass cake and condense the story, which left the fans less than optimistic. Mix that cake batter in with the fact that Netflix is going to Netflix, made everyone have their punchlines ready, surely they we're going to make Monkey D. Luffy a black trans disabled pirate who finds being named king of the pirates is a symptom of dominant social, political, cultural, and economic thoughts that value the idea of toxic masculinity over everything. But then a gleam of light in the sea of darkness. Iichiro Oda, the creator of One Piece, the manga, was heavily involved with the pre-production of production phases. He even demanded Netflix reshoot certain scenes that didn't fit into the world of One Piece. This gave fans some promise. When the trailers dropped, the show earned even more trust. People were now starting to pay attention. Fans were cautiously optimistic. But is the show itself any good? For the sake of brevity, yes. Nyaki Godoy, who plays Monkey De Luffy, is a lead character who is so hopeful and optimistic it makes you want to puke. He's in search of the One Piece, a legendary piece of pirate booty that, if someone were to find it, would be crowned king of the pirates. Godoy is fully bought into the Luffy character, which is good because the series rests almost entirely on his shoulders. One misstep and it would all be an all-out disaster. To round out his eccentric nature are his crewmates that he finds along the way. Well, he calls them his crewmates, but they make sure to point out the opposite with each and every announcement. Nobby, played by Emily Rudd, is a thief with more secrets up her sleeve than she has actual sleeves. Think about it. She's also someone you can't entirely trust as the show goes on, and her past catches up with her. Renona Zoro, a famed pirate hunter looking to be the best living swordsman, he also has to square away the fact that a wannabe pirate just saved him from being held captive. Zoro is played by Makenyu, and Makenyu is Sonny Chiba's son. And honestly, I dropped this little bit of trivia to give me an excuse to play this Sonny Chiba clip. <laughs> to round out this crew of misfits is the conflict adverse Usopp and Sanji the chef, hesitant to leave behind his mentor. All of these characters are fully fleshed out, have flaws, and are nowhere close to being perfect. Where episode 1 and 2 make you feel like this is a world you can enjoy, episodes 3 and 4 challenge your abilities to stay awake. They're not exactly filler episodes because the Straw Hat Pirates finally acquire their ship here, but it's not exciting stuff to watch either. A majority of the time they are stuck in this mansion, and it never seems to be moving forward in the plot. It's two episodes that really could be cut down to one good one. But yar, There is treasure waiting for you after these two episodes, I guarantee it. One moment. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
There is an assortment of villains that keep One Piece interesting. There's Buggy the Clown, whose durability makes him immune to attacks, and draws Luffy and his crew into this nightmare of a circus. Actor Jeff Ward takes this character to the boundary where overacting ends and being a tryhard begins, and it has shades of Jim Carrey at the height of his comedic career. Then you have Arlong the Fishman, whose incredible strength is matched with his sheer presence of danger, and this is all delivered by McKinley Belcher. Honestly, if you think about it, it's no easy feat to do any of this when you have 60 pounds of makeup and prosthetics attached to you. There is Garb, played by Vincent Regan, a semi-retired marine officer who seemingly wants to rid the world of any and all pirates. He takes Kobe, a slave who dreams of becoming a marine and is freed by Luffy, under his wing and a softer and nurturing side is revealed in future episodes. And yeah, it kind of sounds gross on paper, but trust me guys, it works. And lastly, <laughs> There's this mysterious warlord Mihawk, who may only be in the show for a grand total of 15 minutes, maybe, but holy shit, his presence is felt. Listen to this, he wields a cross sword almost as large as he is, and is known as the greatest living swordsman in the world. Stephen John Ward gives this character an off the charts cool factor. Case in point, when he sword fights Zoro, for who's going to be named the best living swordsman? He fights him with a pocket knife, and wins. What the hell is that? I'm here for a sword fight. I don't hunt rabbits with a cannon. The expansive world of One Piece is built up at a breakneck pace. Within the first two episodes, you understand who the pirates are, the marines are, and how this world operates, and what kind of unique characters and characteristics it can provide. And thank God for that, because with a world like One Piece, it would be easy for this show to go into this monotonous detail on why things are the way they are, and why the characters have these certain powers, and blah, 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 blah. Characters build the world. It's not the other way around. One Piece understands this. The set design in One Piece is perfect, <laughs> using minimal CGI to achieve the different locations and looks. I mean, in the present world of green screens and CGI, it is nice to see them actually build such massive and elaborate sets. Gets me all tingly inside. I can feel it all the way down in my plums, getting all swollen, with a light blue hue to them, fresh and juicy, ready for the picking. Everything from the story to the acting to the world is carefully crafted and designed for one thing, to entertain you. It seems like Netflix finally got one right. From the extended sword fights to the naval battles to the super abilities, One Piece live action excels in its own spectacle. The showrunners, writers, and actors all showing love and respect for the source material? Who would have thought of it? Question is, is this the wake up call Netflix desperately needs or is this just a one off? It's too soon to tell. But it does make me look forward to what they have cooking for the second season. So to sum it all up, the one anime that everyone thought could not be adapted as a live action show has actually broken the anime live action curse. Condensing what was 44 episodes in the anime to 8 live action episodes, this is exactly the abridged version of One Piece I was looking for. If you enjoyed this video, you go ahead and smash that like button. While you're done doing that, hit the subscribe button, and then after that, share this with your friends, family, people you hate. Maybe you don't like my content and just want to waste somebody's time. Do it. Share it. Thank you. It is much appreciated. I'm out of here. All great fighters call out their finishing moves. No, they don't. <laughs>